It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and narrow pining till he appeared and the soul felt his worth. A thrill of Morn, oh, fall on your knees, oh, hear the angels' voices, oh, night divine. Welcome to Hope for the Holidays. We are Pastor and Sean Agard of Transformation Fellowship Christian Church, and we're delighted to have you with us. If you haven't already, hit like, hit share, and start a watch party. Tonight, we're going to celebrate the birth of our Christ. Enjoy our program tonight.
Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. The birth of Jesus Christ came about this way. After his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered before they came together that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. So her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. But after he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Because what has been conceived in her is by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. See, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son and they will name him Emmanuel, which is translated into God is with us. When Joseph got up from sleeping, he did as the Lord angel had commanded him and he married her but did not know her intimately until he gave birth to a son and he named him Jesus. pray. Dear Heavenly Father, the creator of it all, the Alpha and Omega, fill our spirits with love, peace, humbleness, joyfulness, dear Heavenly Father. Show us how to love and forgive, dear Heavenly Father, as you have loved and forgave us all, dear Heavenly Father. 
Fill us with your mercy so that we, in return, will be merciful to others, dear Heavenly Father. Strip away any suspicion, any racism, that we may seek peace and justice in our communities, dear Heavenly Father. Strengthen our hearts so that they beat only to the rhythm of your will, dear Heavenly Father. Give us leaders of our communities, states, and countries whose hearts are large enough to match your will and your purpose, dear Heavenly Father. Give our souls strength enough to follow leaders of vision and wisdom, dear Heavenly Father. Let them seek more than satisfaction for their wants, but for the good of you and your children, dear Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I pray that every ear that hears my voice and every ear that does not hear my voice, dear Heavenly Father, you bless them in just a mighty way, dear Heavenly Father, in a way that only you can bless them, dear Heavenly Father. I pray that you keep us humble, dear Heavenly Father, and let your light shine through us, dear Heavenly Father, as you use us as a vessel to disperse just a portion of your goodness, dear Heavenly Father. For it's all in your Son, Jesus Christ's name, every voice say, Amen. Transformation Fellowship Christian Family. My name is Lori Glasgow. It is a pleasure to be with you this evening. I am here to offer a prayer of hope for COVID-19. Father, your word declares that you are our refuge and our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. We thank you, God, for your kindness, mercy, and grace. 
Above all, we give thanks for the privilege to come boldly before your throne with expectancy in our hearts as we offer this prayer of hope for those who have been affected by COVID-19. Lord, we pray for healing for those in the world who are presently experiencing symptoms or illness related to COVID-19. Father, as we consider the implications of COVID-19 on our society, the trauma, the depression, the anxiety, the homelessness, the joblessness, the insufficiency of food and money that this worldwide pandemic has had upon your people. Lord, remind us that you remain sovereign and committed to the plan of prosperity that you have for our lives. Lord, we thank you for the love and compassion of the caregivers and the medical providers that you have given us. Father, we pray that your sustaining grace continues to strengthen, encourage, and empower our healthcare professionals as they offer their service to those who are suffering. Father, we pray for families who have lost loved ones during this pandemic. During their time of sorrow and tragedy, we stand together with them in hope that your peace and your comfort will guide their hearts and minds. Finally, Father, we seek restoration in this prayer and ask that you restore our world to wholeness and good health. Amen. I will be reading Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, Wise men from the east arrived unexpectedly in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was deeply disturbed, and all Jesus with him. So he assembled all the chief priests and scribes of the people, and asked them where the Messiah would be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they told him, because this is what was written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, because out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly summoned the wise men and asked the exact time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. When you find him, report back to me so that I too can go and worship him. After hearing the king, they went on their way, and there it was, the star that had been seen in the east. It led them until it came and stopped above the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed beyond measure. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and falling to their knees, they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warmed in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country by another route.
Christmas. In the quiet of this season, I have taken the time to ponder the birth of Christ, the year 2020, and of course, hope. And in this time of reflection, I've asked myself the question, what way has God shown up in you and for you most profoundly this year? Several months ago, in the midst of all the chaos that had become the world that we live in, in the midst of global pandemic and racial injustice and the crisis of lack, I was desperately in need of some sort of refuge, um, some sort of quiet. And so I chose to plant a garden. And lo and behold, this is where God showed up for me. I designed the garden as a means to feel some sort of accomplishment, personal accomplishment, because I was experiencing a time in my life where I felt nothing that I touched flourished. God's goal, however, was quite different, of course. And instead of accomplishment, God's goal was for me to feel and sense growth. So in God's divine fashion, God matched me plant for plant. For every single plant that I would plant in the earth, God would plant hope. For every collard green, tomato, okra, pepper, mustard, God planted hope. And this may come as a surprise to many, but not every seed flourished. This includes the seeds that God planted in me. I found that some of these seeds were eaten by birds and squirrels, and yet some of them were eaten and consumed by fear. Some made it into the soil but did not quite 
take root because the soil was not prepared to receive. But the seeds that made it, the ones that grew, the plants that bore fruit, they fed our stomachs, they filled our tables, and they created such joy in my heart. And it was in this act of planting, of waiting, of growing, of pruning and purging and watching that I began to really appreciate the cycle of hope. The fear, the doubt, and the hopelessness of hope. The breaking, the stretching, and the fruiting of hope. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of hope. It is in this reflective moment where we should recognize that in this season of Advent, we not only celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, Mighty God, Wonderful Counselor, and my favorite, the Great I Am, but we celebrate the shoot from the stump of Jesse. An unfamiliar name I know, the shoot from the stump of Jesse, rarely spoken about and rarely celebrated, but most fitting during the sacred season of waiting and observance. Allow me to read just a few verses from Isaiah 11, where this name originates. The shoot from the stump of Jesse. Now keep in mind, most versions actually utilize that title, but I'm going to read the New Living Translation because of its poetry. The royal line of David will be cut off, chopped down like a tree, but from the stump will grow a shoot, yes, a new branch from the old root. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight will be in the obedience of the Lord. He will not judge by appearance, false evidence, or hearsay, but will defend the poor and the exploited. He will rule against the wicked who oppress him, for he will be clothed with fairness and with truth. In the day, in that day, the wolf and the lamb will lie together, and the leopard and the goats will be at peace. Calves and fat cattle will be safe among lions, and the little child shall lead them. Christ as the embodiment of hope, growing and stretching and branching and thriving and reaching toward us to redeem the unredeemable. Christ became our hope in order to plant hope and to grow hope, so to nourish, cover, and sustain a hopeless world. Allow me just a few more moments to engage your imaginations and follow the journey of hope through the eyes of a seed. The journey of hope. The seed came about at the scene of a fall, much like what happened at the beginning. The long fall from death's grasp to an uncertain fate rocked eternity from its always to its never ending. So as the ground was conditioned for good soil, the seed found its home on earth's floor. Although good, the soil to the seed felt like the end of all things, sinking to rise no more. For the seed, the darkness had never been so dark, like the cosmos without the sun, stars, and moon. At every corner, no feeling, no sight, no existence, no tidings of great joy ringing soon. What the seed first sensed as tears became like the flood about Noah's ark. Many waters cascade, eroding the earth, and the seed's view grew increasingly stark. It speaks for itself, a gray silence that emerged, the deafening sound of nothingness and shame. The thick thieving silence that swallows our prayers and voice that calls out in God's name. 
And as though things could not be any worse, the seed split on its side, a rip where, if it had one, the heart would reside. It is the breaking from me that has taken, I think, the final bit of faith that God abides. There's now shaking about, a tremble, a seizure, the rumble of growth from a sprout. Through all it's endured, a change has ensued, slowly trampling a forementioned doubt. No longer a seed, but a conduit of faith, a causeway of great possibility. Unrecognizable, you see, the look of this seed as it bends into newfound reality. But the pride of it all, the sheer prize of it all, after death and its watery grave, is the fruit that it bears, the sweet ripeness to share in the name of the one that will save. And it is the meaning of this parable that the seed is the hope of God. And now, may the seed of hope planted in this season fall onto the richest soil. May the earth watered with your tears bring about a breakthrough of possibility. May you embrace the gift of silence as the work of God takes root on the inside, though the world around you may seem bare. May you stretch far beyond your efforts and grow far beyond your imagination. May you realize that the power of God, with the power of God, you can grow even in dead places. May you bear enough fruit to nourish your soul and the souls of others longing just for a taste of God's glory. May this season remind you that hope grows at God's pace and God's timing is perfect. Amen.
Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed yourself today. We look forward to having you come join us again this Sunday with TFCC. See you next time. Thank you.